Okay, are you serious? Can we talk about King Abdullah the Second, the King of Jordan? Uh, there are more Palestinian refugees in Jordan than in any Arab country in the world. Although Queen Raina is a Palestinian, Jordan considers the right of return a vital part of the Israeli. Palestinian Authority peace negotiations. Now, the ancient city of Petra, Jordan was the resting place of the Holy Grail in Indiana Jones movie, The Last Crusade, if you guys remember that. The 6th century Rose City is one of the world's most impressive sites. Archaeological riches from Greco-Roman times where King Solomon had built ships and the Queen of Sheba had come to visit him back and also, there's been so many, many more things that's happened during that time. Now, His Majesty, King Abdullah II bin al-Hussein, reigns the land between Iran and Israel on the Gulf. He's 37 years old. He assumed the Hashanite kingdom's monarchy on the day that his father, King Hussein, passed away back in 1999. He's blue-eyed. Blue eyed. Now think about that for a minute. Okay, directly descended from the Prophet Muhammad, Abdullah II is the oldest son of King Hussein. And his British born second wife, Anjouanette Gardner, he attended the Islamic Educational College in Amman, Jordan. He then went on to St. Edmunds in Scurry, England, and then to America, to Deerfield Academy in Massachusetts. And in 1980, he graduated from the Royal Military Academy at Sandhurst in the, in the United Kingdom. Becoming a battalion leader in the Royal Hussars, British Army, completing a studies course in Middle Eastern Affairs, he joined the Jordanian Armed Forces in 1985. He attended the Armored Officers Advanced Course at Fort Knox, Kentucky, becoming a Cobra attack pilot. He served the Royal Jordanian Air Force. And at Georgetown University, he received a master's degree before resuming a military career. Abdullah II was promoted to Major General in 1998 and attended defense courses in Monterey, California at the Naval Post Graduate School. He is a qualified frogman, a free fall parachute, a pilot, a motorcyclist, and a race car driver. This guy's done it all! This guy has done it all. And why am I saying this? Because he married a Kuwaiti-born Palestinian girl who has a degree, has a degree, excuse me, from the American University of Cairo, Egypt. Her name is Queen Raina. She used to work for Citibank and for Apple in Imam Jordan. And she's a stunningly beautiful woman with expensive taste and designer clothes. She is a regular in London Society pages, and they have four children. I set, the, I set the, the table for you based on an article written in the Amman News that is it possible that King Abdullah II, is he, and is he potentially the man that will try to bring peace to the Middle East? Now, you have to understand something. He has, he has um, a lot of cons uh, compassion for the Palestinian people because his wife is Palestinian. He himself has studied in England and in America. Of course, he's a, he's a descendant from Muhammad, yet at the same time has studied among mere American cultural. And a, a pilot, a frogman, a, a motorcyclist, a race car driver, Highly educated, master degree. This guy has been done it all and come from royal blood. Is he potentially the peacemaker? Now, our last best chance, the pursuit of peace in a time of peril, his mentor, uh, excuse me, the name of his me uh, memoir is called Our Last Best Chance. It's the pursuit of peace in time of peril. It focuses on the Middle Eastern peace process and his journey to the throne. He wrote it. The back cover is signed by who? President Bill Clinton, General Tommy Frank, and American businessman Warren Buffett. This is, the, this is the level he operates in. And understand the mentality. He's thinking peace. 
He's thinking tranquility. He's thinking becoming maybe the leader of the entire Middle Eastern world. And you might say, well, Paul, come on. You're crazy. No, 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 no. Listen for a minute. Listen. President Cabo is gone from the Ivory Coast. Tunisia's 23-year Muslim monarchy king, Ben Ali, gone this spring as well. Also, 32-year Jose Mubarak of Egypt, gone. Also, 42-year Muslim monarchy dictator Muammar Gaddafi, gone. Soon, soon the 12-year leader and his father, 32-year leader of Syria, Bashar Assad, will be gone. And, of course, Ali Alabalalala Saleh, who's been there for many years in Yemen, will be gone. That doesn't leave hardly anybody left that's got a monarchy, except for the, the Saudi prince. There's not many left that have the a prestigious ability to potentially rise above the fray. Forget Ahmadulajad. Forget him. He's not royalty. He's, hey, no, not at all. And forget the Ayatollah Khomeini, because that's a spiritual leadership over there. No, no, no. no we're talking about a guy who understands the peace process, highly educated, connections in both the royal British governments and the American governments. He's also respected among Israelis as well as Palestinians. He has his hands in the throttle. He has his ear to the ground. He understands the culture of the Middle East. Could it be this blue-eyed king of Jordan? Could he rise to become the peacemaker of the Middle East? And what does that, what does that put him in the scope of biblical prophecy. Where do you put him at? Where does he fit? Is it possible that he is the one that will walk into the temple of God and declare before the worshipers of God that he is God? Does this put him in that potential possibility of the Antichrist? Not because he comes in with such a blazing Antichrist agenda like Ahmadulajad or some of the other dictators of the world that have been so ferociously and viciously attacking the, the, the West and its culturals of Christianity. No, 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 no. No, no, no. He doesn't come across that way. He comes at a more articulate. He comes at it from a more... Um, um, his, his ideology and his, his philosophy is much more of a peaceable approach. Is it possible? I'm just asking. Could it be? Should we keep an eye upon King Abdullah II, the blue-eyed king of Jordan? Now, James McKay asked the question to me in an email today, and I've also talked to other folks who are always looking around. I'm not saying that he is. Some folks are saying, Paul, you're missing it completely. There's a, there's a guy that's just romping and stomping right now, knocking down nation after nation after nation after nation. You can see the handwriting on the wall. And potentially, that world leader might be. But my question is because I see in Daniel chapter 11, I see a precursor. I see somebody coming to set the table. Somebody's moving all these dictators out of the way. Somebody's help orchestrating them. And are they setting the table for the emergence of the king of peace? Are they setting the table for the emergence of the man who will bring peace and prosperity to the world? Is the Antichrist just around the corner as wars and rumors of wars and as nation is rising its nation and as there's signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars and as all this intensity begins? I'm just asking, could it be? I'm not saying that it is. It's just a question. How close are we? To the rise of the Antichrist. And if it's not him, who is it? Or is it on the horizon? I'm Pastor Paul Beckley. Keep your eyes open right now on biblical prophecy going on because I don't know. I'm not saying that I do know. I'm just asking the question because the table seems to be being set for an end time, an end time revelation to be revealed. Are you saved? If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, I'm going to ask you to do this. While you still have time, call upon the name of the Lord. The Bible says, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. If you'll ask Jesus into your heart, he will come in and save you. He will wash you with his blood and make your heart as white as snow. If you need help in that, send me a personal message right here on YouTube. Right here. Right now. Do it now. Send me a personal message. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. In Jesus' name.